G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. You've caught me having a cuppa. No, not really, it's today's pattern. Today's pattern is a very requested little teacup and saucer made in fabric and felt, and it goes perfectly with my little teapot, part of a new series. So, there's a free pattern for you that I've been working on this week. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below, download those pattern templates, and I'm just gonna give you a tip about printing out all of my pattern templates. Sometimes when you go to print out things on a printer, it can do funny things. Trust me, if you're having any problems with getting the sizing right when you're printing out my patterns, you just have to put the setting to print at actual size. So it's very easy to do, it's right there in the settings, print those pattern templates out at actual size and they'll be spot on every time. So let's get those templates printed and let's get sewing. Okay, let's have a look at what we need to make this little teacup and saucer. So you've got all your pattern templates and it tells you on your pattern templates what you need to do to prepare your fabrics. But I'll show you here. So we have for the cup, we have for the outside of the cup, you need to choose a print. And for the inside of the cup, which will be our liner, you need to choose a different print. So what I'm going to be doing with this little cup is I'm going to be doing the same thing that I did with the teapot. And I'm going to have an alternative panel at the front and we're going to have a little heart shape on there. So one of my front, one of my outer pieces of my cup, you cut 12 in all, but one of them I'm going to make the green instead of the floral. The rest of the outside of the cup will be all floral. The inside of the cup will be the little check, but I've got an extra piece in the green and my little heart will be going on there and that will be the little feature front. Now, of course, you don't have to do this. You can make your cup entirely all out of one print. And I actually really love them made all just in a pretty, especially the little ditzy florals like this. Um, it gives it that real chintzy little look and it's very, very sweet. But just to be able to show you this technique today, we're gonna to be adding a little panel in the front of the cup. So you need six panels for your outer cup and six panels for your inside cup. Now, what I've done with those, they are cut from interfaced fabric, which is just a quilting cotton I'm using. And then I've gone ahead and I have added, you'll also see in your templates that I asked you to cut extra pieces, 12 extra pieces of very firm interfacing. Now the one I'm using here it's actually, I've made it into a fusible by adding some heat and bond on the back. So I'll take that off now. You can see that that's a woven, very firm interfacing, and now it's fusible. So on the back of every one of those little pieces, I've added that interfacing on top of the interfacing that's already on there. I know that sounds like a lot, but this little cup isn't stuffed in any way, and we want it to hold itself. I might also say with this design, I've really wanted to keep it looking like an actual teacup in its dimensions. So I've kept it to be, to end up looking very fine. So it's nice and fine, nice sharp edges. So it holds itself very well. So that's why we need this extra interfacing. Um, so when you're applying this interfacing, I don't know if you can see it there. I hope you can but we're lining it, up, lining it up at the bottom and we're having space all around the other edges there. You can see there's a reason for that. Um, so we want to line it up at the bottom and press every one of those little pieces on. You see I've got them on every single piece. The beauty of that is when we come to sew it, it's, that's exactly our seam allowance. So it makes the job a lot easier. So those are our cup pieces and you've got your interfacing pieces. I also asked you to cut an extra circle of interfacing and that's for your base piece. So this is your base of your cup and that's just interfaced fabric, the same as the sides. Only I've added that little extra circle of extra interfacing again on that one. Okay, and that's all to keep it all nice and uh, secure and nice and fresh. So we need our um, 
a little heart shape if you're going to go with that you can also if you're using a print you might want to just instead of using the little heart shape you might want to just fussy cut something from your perhaps you're using a floral print you can fussy cut some little a little shape a little bouquet and put that on instead now let's move on to our handle so a handle is made, I don't know if any of you have made my teapot, but the handle on the cup is made in much the same way. So we need our two handle pieces and they're cut from interfaced felt. And we also need a piece of interfaced felt. I've already blanket stitched this one. That's for the inside of the cup and that will be pressed down on the inside of the cup. And that's why I have blanket stitched the edge. We'll talk about that later. And you'll also need a felt, double felt circle and that one is for the middle of our saucer. And you'll also need something for the base of the little cup, the little teacup that we're going to glue in to keep it sitting nice and flat. Now I happen to have a teddy bear disc that is exactly the right size. Alternatively you can just cut yourself the circle, you've got the template there. And you just cut one out. I like to use matte board, framers, picture framers, matte board. It's very, very strong and it's nice and fine. So I, I usually, if I don't have a wooden disc, I, this is the stuff that I use. Um, and we will need two chenille sticks, the nice long ones, because they're going to go in our handle. Now to make our saucer, we have six of our bottom pieces. So remember when you're choosing your fabrics, you have to decide which is going to be on the underside of your saucer, what's going to be on the top side of your saucer. So what will be seen against your little cup? So six of those pieces and they're just interfaced as usual and your six outer pieces, which are your top pieces of your saucer. And then of course, our little circle is going to go in the middle. So they are also interfaced. You're going to need a couple of buttons for your handle. So something that fits just the end, end of the handle there. We're going to need some clear craft glue and fabric glue. And we're also going to need, um, if you've got a long bamboo skewer or something like that, just we're going to be doing a bit of gluing inside that saucer. You'll need your embroidery threads for doing your little appliques and a couple of little pieces on there and that's about it. So our first step we're going to start with, now I know it's a lot of little pieces but they're all very simple. This is surprisingly simple to make um, and you'll see at the end we get such a lovely result. So move all this lot out of the way and we're going to start with our handle. Now the first thing we're going to do with our handle is just what we did with our teapot. It's made in the same way. And we're going to leave one top end open. Going to take it to the machine and sew as close as we can to that edge in a matching thread right around the base, up again and finish up here. And just leave this top section open. So there we have my little handle stitching in place. And our next step is to add our little chenille sticks. Now, I've got my two chenille sticks and I folded them in half and I've trimmed them off so that those four layers, that measurement there is about 11 centimetres. It's just long enough to slip in there. So we take our folded end, and we're going to pop that in through our top there and you'll find that they'll push in very easily and you want to push it down just far enough that we've still got room to add our little button. You still need to be able to sew your little button on. And then I'm going to go ahead, just trim it off if you need to. Then I'm going to go ahead and with my pearl thread, because I'm matching up with my teapot, I'm going to use the same thread as I did on this handle. And I'm going to sew a blanket stitch around the entire outside edge and close up that little opening as I do so. If you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before, I'm going to put a link up there to my other video that shows you how to sew a blanket stitch in great detail. And the best part about sewing this little seam first is that you've got that little line there so you know exactly how deep to make your little blanket stitches. 
So there's our little handle all finished and we can just pop that one aside ready to add that one later. So our next step is to add our little centre panel applique and we're going to be adding, as I said, you could put anything on, on this centre panel here. You could do a little bit of hand embroidery, anything you like or as I said you can keep all of those panels the same colour or you could alternate right the way around as I have with this one. So it's entirely up to you. Mine is going to be done, I have this little one, the little shell done. Mine's going to be done in this way. So we have that, that little centre panel and then we've got the little floral all the way around. So you can see that's what I'm going for here. So we're going to add that little applique. Now if you're using my little heart template, the very point of that little heart sits about four centimetres from the very base and that's a good position for it there. Make sure that it is centered nicely and we press that one on using a hot iron and a protective cloth. So you can see there that little heart is pressed into place and I have gone ahead and stitched. I've used my Guterman Extra Strong thread and sewn a blanket applique stitch around that little heart shape. You could just stitch it on the machine. You might have a machine that does a nice stitch for around the edge, you could do that entirely up to you um, and our next step is to join our little front panel pieces together. So if you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before I do have a video tutorial for that one. I'm going to pop that up there just in case. Okay so our next step is to make up our little shell of our outside of our teacup. So we're going to take the next pieces so in this case it is our floral pieces and we're going to do this little shell cut up in sections. So we're going to be sewing a four millimeter seam allowance and thankfully we have that piece of extra interfacing that gives us that lovely line to actually follow. We don't want to be sewing on that firm interfacing, we want to be sewing right next to it. That way our seams aren't as bulky and the whole thing will sit out and it really holds itself. You can see there how well that little cup shape sits out and that's without its liner or anything. So it will hold itself very well. So we start at the top with each piece. Start at the top, make sure you back and forth and we're just going to sew straight down and back and forth at the bottom. So we're going to add first to that piece to that side and then we're going to do exactly the same thing and we're going to add the other piece. So we end up with our front like that. We're going to do exactly the same with the three remaining pieces. So we do them in threes. We're going to join those three together. The reason that we do it this way is because we do need to press out those seams. We want them open and flat and that's a lot easier to do when you have less pattern pieces joined it gets trickier, trickier as we get a bit further along and I know that it might seem fiddly and it takes a bit of time to press out all those little seams but trust me it takes me a long time too but the end result is worth it and putting it together I never want to set you up for failure so I make sure that your patterns are, are correct and they're easy to follow which is also my next point, you need to be very careful throughout this project to stay true to that four millimeter seam allowance because the more pattern pieces we have, the more variables they create. And we're going to be sewing a little base circle in at the bottom of this cup, as you can see there. And we're going to want that all to fit. If we change our seam allowances too much, that little circle will be trickier to put in. So let's keep those all nice and even and we're going to sew our three together, press those seams out nice and flat and we're going to sew our three together. Okay so now we've got our little shell pieces so we've got our front and back and by doing it in the two sections we're able to press those seams out. We really do want them nice and flat so now our next step is to add the little front to the back in exactly the same way. So I will stitch that one on, take it back to my iron and press that seam open and then I will stitch the final seam 
up and down and then because you're you've then got a little circle because it will be all joined it's a little trickier to press out that final seam um, but just get in there as well as you can unless you're lucky enough to have a little quilting iron um, that gets into really tiny spots but um, finger press it um, as much as you can and, and get your iron down there as far as you can so we're going to sew up those two seams so there we've got our little outer shell of our little cup and you can see all of those seams pressed out most importantly on the top and lower edges that those seams are nice and flat okay so exactly what we've just done there in that construction you now go ahead and do exactly the same thing with your six liner pieces so more pressing more little stitching and then we've got our inside liner shell we're just going to pop that one aside for the minute because we're going to add our base circle now we only add a base circle to the outside so you only have to sew one in I'm trying to keep it as as easy as possible in this design so we take our little base circle which we've got our little extra interfacing applied we're putting right sides together so our little shell is inside out and pinning is everything when you're trying to sew in a little circle nice and evenly so it's more about the pinning than it is about the sewing so choose anywhere on that circle and anywhere around your edge but I like to start with a little seam so one of those little flat seams that I've pressed out so I've taken my pin through both layers I flip my project over and I take a little bit on the underside of that fabric and then I push my pin all the way down pin head right the way down then I move a little way along so we pin through both layers flip our project over take a little bit of that underside fabric and pin head all the way you'll find if you've kept your seam allowances nice and even that this little circle will just fit in nicely you won't have to do much easing at all again with our pin now I'm going to pin that in right the way around and show you how that looks there it is all pinned in you can see because I've kept strictly to my four millimeter seam allowance on all of those pieces that little circle has pinned in there perfectly um, and like I said I will never set you up for failure the patterns will fit beautifully just remember that seam allowance so now that that's pinned in place you can see that's exactly how the little cup will sit there's no other way there's no better way to pin it and sew it that is the best way and it's the easiest way so what I will go ahead and do now is I've got my extra strong thread and I'm just going to sew an overcasting stitch right the way around that little edge now the little seam allowance is the same again it's about four millimeters but first of all I'm going to sew right the way around with my overcasting stitch because that allows me to take my pins out you can see there so I'm going to make my way right the way around and then I'm going to be actually sewing this seam with a stab back stitch it's much easier to sew that stab back stitch once all of those pins are out of the way now if you haven't sewn a stab back stitch before it's a totally linked stitch it's the one we use it's very very strong it's just as strong as a machine stitch but obviously we can't get this little section under the machine and get a lovely clean circle so we do it by hand it's a fully linked stitch and I have a video that shows you how to sew it and uh, I'm going to pop that link up there for you to have a look so I'm going to overcast remove my pins and sew a stab back stitch right the way around that base so there we've got our little disc you can see all stitched in there and I've just turned that one through and I've gone around and made sure that I've really rolled out those seams especially on those little junctions there on each side seam so roll that one all out and so you've got everything that nice little shape happening there and we have our little outer teacup 
So our next step is in there at the base is where we're going to glue our little disc. Now yours might be wooden or it might be the little cardboard disc but the, the size I've given you is perfect to sit straight in there and I have my little wooden one and I've just added my just a clear craft glue that dries pretty quickly. So I've glued up that side and I'm just going to drop that one in there and you'll find that it'll fit just beautifully. Push it down well and pull up on your fabric at the sides and you can see that that little one just sits nicely in that little circle and you just want to make sure that's settled in. So we let that sit for a while. You want that to be absolutely dry before we move on to adding our liner. So probably about 15 minutes. My little base should be nice and dry now. So the way that I've got my little cup, the outer one, as you can see, is, the, is turned the right way. The inner lining is inside out and that's exactly what we want. And so we're going to put these two pieces together now. So we're going to drop the outer one into the liner and wherever possible we want to line up our seams. You can see there I'm going to push that down and try and meet up those seams all the way around. Now you can use your pins for this or your little clippies. So I'm just going to pin it into place and it may not line up exactly. It's very hard to get, you know, those seam allowance ex absolutely exact. But we do the best we can. You'll find it will fit pretty well. And I'm just going to pin at all of those points right the way around, match it all up. And then we're going to stitch that one on the machine. I will probably overcast that. Just tack it into place first with my extra strong thread, just with an overcasting stitch, just so that it's all holding together really well when I take it to the machine. And then I'm going to stitch that top seam right the way around on my machine. And I'm going to stay just this side of where our very firm interfacing finishes so that when we fold that over, that fold over seam is going to sit really nice and flat. So take your time. It's probably worth it to overcast it first and sew that seam right the way around the top. There, I've sewn my little top seam all the way around and I'm just going to turn this one through and turn it through to the inside. And there we have our little teacup with the liner all turned through. You can see in there that I've gone around because of that very firm interfacing not being involved in that seam it folds in beautifully and it wants to stay in there and it keeps all of this top seam nice and flat. Now I've then gone around and pushed all of those seams popped out in together and you'll see that they really do hold themselves very well and I've just tucked that bottom piece in there right around that little wooden stabilizing disc that I have and you can see we end up with a lovely fine looking uh, cup but it's very very sturdy and in fact it can you can hold things in it it's it's really quite strong so you can now you can, there's two ways you can treat that top edge you can leave it completely I like it I leave mine I don't do anything to that top edge because it sits so beautifully and it, to me it looks more like a cup that way um, if you wanted to add an extra trim, of course, you could sew a little blanket stitch around that whole top edge if you felt like you wanted to add something more, or perhaps you could take it back to the machine and sew a very close top stitch right around that edge too. So that's entirely up to you. If you're using um, perhaps a shabby floral sort of design, <coughs> excuse me, you may... Um, wish to use perhaps some gold metallic thread around the top there to give that indication of gilding so there's so many different things you can do i'll leave that to your creative um, desires so this one is all pressed in nicely now so our next step we are going to be adding our little disc in the bottom there but before we do that we're going to add our handle so we need to mark in where our handle is going to go so our handle top 
uh, button is stitched on at one and a half centimeters from the very top and from the bottom it's three and a half centimeters so you make your two marks and the way that we sew that on is I've got my little handle here I've sewn my button on ahead of time that just makes it easier and I'm going to be sewing that handle straight on with the handle going straight up like that because then we're going to fold it over and remember we've got our chenille stick inside so then we're going to be able to fold that one over and mold it into a lovely shape and we'll be attaching the button the other side and then we've got a lovely little handle that we can mold as we like it but to begin with we have that pointing straight upwards and we're going to sew that little button on exactly on that little spot then we're going to fold it over and we're going to sew our other little button on on the outside straight through while we can still get into the base of that cup and now I have my little handle in place so you can have once that's stitched into place and you have a little play with that shape and get it how you like it and you see that's our little cup so our last step with this one is go over your seams again and make sure you've got everything pressed into place where you want them to sit and that those edges down the bottom are nicely tucked in there and now we're going to add our little cover disc we don't sew this in we're just going to glue it in over the top and you can see it's just interfaced felt but I've gone around and sewn a little blanket a stitch around that entire outside and I've added some glue to that little disc and I've made sure I've gone right to the edges there and it's just a matter of dropping that into the bottom and getting it into the right position and pressing that all down so there you can see that's my little disc all glued in and pressed into place you can go around with a cotton reel if you like and make sure that edge gets pressed in nice and tight and you can see with that little blanket stitched edge it's a lovely interior finish for your cup and it also holds that little lining into place there so that's our little cup all ready and done so now we need our saucer so we're going to put the little cup aside and that can be drying there that little base so now what we're going to do with our saucer pieces this is what our little finished saucer will look like so just a lovely little lovely little cup shape so we're going to start with our base pieces now it's put together in the same way that the little cup is where we sew our little pieces together now because the the bottom layer goes to a point when you start your sewing on each one because we're sewing each of the pieces down the side seams there we're going to join them all together to create that circle we want to be starting our sewing just a little way from that tip so that when we add our when we put our two halves together we've still got a seam allowance there so start your sewing on each side the seam allowance distance down and then you start your stitching there and you're going to sew down and then you're going to add the next one as we did before and we're going to again we're going to do them in threes and we're going to do the same with the little top section so the top section has a little hole in the middle and so we're going to be sewing those right from the top to that lower edge we don't have to worry about dropping down with this one because it's not coming down to a point so in the same way that you sewed your circles together to create your cup that's how we're going to sew these together now I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you what that looks like so here are my two saucer halves for the base part of the saucer and because I've done them in threes like that I've been able to get that nicely pressed out especially at that front tip there and so now we can go ahead and with right sides together we can just sew that one straight across straight across that center there 
and then we'll do the same and we'll press that center seam out nice and flat and you can see with the top one I've just joined them all together except for that final side so that I could press all those seams out flat too and now I can go ahead and join that final one and press that one out there so now we've got our, our bottom part of our saucer and our top, top part of our saucer all done so we're going to put right sides together now and when I've pressed those particularly on this bottom section make sure that you get that pressed as flat as you can at that junction there just makes for a smoother finish all round now just as we did with the teacup we're going to try our best to match up our seams if they're not perfect don't worry it really won't affect the look but I just find that if I can match them up as well as I can the overall look is better so I like to put a clip on each of those little junctions and make my way around that whole circle clipping it all into place and then we're going to be sewing that same four millimeter seam allowance around the whole top edge of that little saucer now while you're sewing this remember that this seam that you're sewing now is the outer edge of your saucer so be very aware of getting it nice and smooth and nicely rounded there is my saucer all stitched all the way around and you can see I've gone ahead and used my pinking shears around that edge you can just clip that edge if you don't have pinking shears and now we just turn that one through that little opening you'll find that'll turn through pretty easy and then I like to use my knitting needle to push out all of those seams so I'm going to push them all out then I'm going to roll them all out especially on those junctions and I'm going to give that another press once my little saucer is all pressed out and those edges are nice and even there you could leave that one just as it is around the edge but in this case I do sew a top stitch right around that top edge so just close into the edge there and I use a matching thread so it's it's not really obvious um, and that will just settle that lining into place my top stitching is all done and you can see that gives that saucer a nice little edge and anytime we top stitch or add another row of stitching it also gives strength and hold so it means that little saucer holds its shape very well so the, this next step is probably a little optional so it's up to you whether you do it or not I like to do it and that is that I get myself a little bit of cardboard and I have some clear craft glue on there my fabric glue and I get my little skewer my little bamboo stick what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of glue on the inside as e of each of those sections just a little smear of glue and then what I'll do is press them into place so it's not a huge amount of glue because we don't want it seeping through our fabric but just enough to hold those in place also what that does once that glue is dry it gives our saucer just that little bit more hold so just a little bit more strength once it's dry and then I mean that little saucer could be used as a dish to hold anything it's very strong um, and I just find that little bit of extra glue does make all that difference so that's up to you but it will hold itself quite well without that so I get a little bit on the end of my skewer and then I carefully tuck that in there and I'm just getting the bottom layer and I'm just smearing that in and I'm going to go right the way around and do that and as I said I'm then going to press it all together and let that glue dry you can see that that glue there has allowed me really just to mold that little saucer shape so I've got that all sitting nicely and you can let it dry sitting in that shape and it will hold itself and our final step is to add our little circle in the center and I've just done the same thing I have added some glue to my little piece of doubled felt and I'm going to center that one and press that one down and we're going to let that one dry before we do some final stitching around the edge 
And there we have our final step is to take that little one now it's dry and just stitch close to the edge on the machine in a matching thread all the way around there. That settles that circle in nicely and that's our saucer done. And so we just add our little cup and that's our completed little cup and saucer. How sweet is that? It's come together really well and I know it has taken a little bit of time but a uh, fair bit of piecework there but you can see that it really is it's quite straightforward and of course doesn't it look fabulous with the little teapot. Just letting you know that's not the end of this series I have more in plan for this series. I might keep my little clips in mine and you can have yours on display in a cabinet or you can use it you can see that that little cup is more than capable of holding your little bits and pieces as well so I hope you've enjoyed making one of my favorite little projects with me well thank you all for sewing with me today I hope you've enjoyed making this little one if you have you could give me a thumbs up that would be absolutely beautiful I am going to be adding to this collection a few have you a few of you have very kindly suggested um, that I add to this collection so I'm going to be doing a little sugar pot and a little creamer jug and then I thought you know why stop there let's just go crazy and uh, I'm going to be creating some lovely little afternoon tea time treats some little cakes and biscuits to go along with it so make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already you don't want to miss any of those big hi to all of my new subscribers thank you so much I hope you enjoy our journey sewing journey together you can also follow me on Instagram if you like and you can see a lot of these little projects at their very beginning stages you also get sometimes a little bit of a sneaky peek at the upcoming videos so you can send me pictures too anything that you're making that you've made from my patterns I would love to see what you what you do with them I especially love to see the different colors that you use um, because I obviously never get to make enough of them so looking forward to those and I'll pin them on a Pinterest board I have especially for you I'm going to show off your work to the world so most of all everybody you know all of the good things that come to you in your day make sure that you just pay them forward because we all can and until next time it's zero from me